I have a dog named Sammy. He's just excessive. Like, he loves to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Sounds like someone else I know. And <laughs> he's the kind of dog where there's no grazing. Like, he'll explode into a bowl of food. You know what I mean? Like, ar, 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 ar. He, just, he, he literally, he'll just eat so much to the point where he turns into this, we call him a ham missile, because he looks like a missile full of ham when he's done. <laughs> and you could just fire him at another country. You know what I mean? Like, I thought about giving my dog to the military to fight the Middle East at some point, because if you dropped him and food splattered everywhere, I think the pellets would just be shrapnel going through people with wheat and barley and lamb, you know? <laughs> One of the problems is he likes to eat his own feces. Yeah, I mean, I, I went to a vet, he's like, you know, what you can do is you can take this white powder called Forbid, and you put it in the food. And so that way, when he tastes it, it makes his poop unappetizing. What the heck is in this powder that tastes worse than poop? <laughs> I thought poop had the market on that. Like, what, what else can you add to poop to make it like, oh, oh so that looks like some good poop. Oh, there's Forbid in it, screw that! <laughs> Sammy was a breakup dog. We all know the breakup dog, you know what I mean? Some people uh, have naked meltdowns in the street after breakup. Some people go, you know what, I need to go save an animal. Like, I literally got this dog going, it's totally gonna fix me, you know what I mean? Didn't fix me at all. Nicole, uh, you know, she didn't want to date me. It was more like a caveman thing. I came over, mm, clubbed her, dragged her home, I have dog. You know, and then I think Sammy was like a good selling point, you know what I mean? Actually, the first time that I met Skylar was at a comedy show, and he had brought his dog on stage. And I fell in love with Sammy. <laughs> and I asked to take a picture with Sam, and he goes, hey, what about me? And I said, oh, I guess I'll take a picture with you, too. Next thing you know, I'm dating a girl with kids. You know what I mean? Who knew? Um... Skylar was away in Detroit filming a movie, and he had Sammy with him, and I was lonely. So my friend brought over his litter of puppies and um, all the puppies stayed the night with me and I woke up in the morning and George was cuddled in my armpit and I was like, oh, I gotta keep him. And Nicole Skypes me and she all of a sudden pulls this puppy into frame. And I held up the puppy and I was like, look, I got a puppy. And he's like, look, we're not getting a dog. We have two kids, we got a dog with issues. Well, I named him after your grandpa, George. Who had just died. And so all of a sudden I'm like, you named him George? <laughs> I was like, oh, nice. Well played, Lighter, well played. Come on, Sammy. Don't you know how to play cool, buddy? You wake up in the morning, you try and feed both dogs. It just doesn't happen right. Look how fast he eats. Sammy inhales his food like he's in one of those hot dog eating contests. See, and he's already looking back here because he wants to know where George's food is going to be. And then you got George over here, and George gets nervous and defends his food. Like, Sammy will walk over, and George's like, oh, oh, you're not getting me lucky charms. Oh. And then the next thing you know, like, George will just come up for breath for a second, and he'll just, like, start choking and then Sammy will just move in for the kill and finish the bowl. Like, he doesn't have something in him that says, stop, you've had enough. Like, he will just keep eating. If his bag of food was left out, he would eat the entire bag. Sammy! Sammy! So this is what happens when I leave a plate of food out. If the kids or I were eating dinner and we get up to go to the bathroom, he will just immediately jump up there and grab our food. Just jumps on the table, starts munching. All right, looks like we're going fast food again, kids. <laughs> Sammy will lick me for days on end. You're just a big hunk of meat, baby. That's right. If I could get Nicole to lick me as much as Sammy does, seriously. And then I'd see, like, poop smears on the ground. And he'd start licking my face. Like, what's up, buddy? I love you. I'm like, I love you back. And we're, like, licking tongues. And I'm like, man, it really smells like feces right now. And I realized that he would eat it. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? And then we'd start making out. And, I, you know, in time, I grew to love it, you know? Oh, this is always one of my favorite things. But Sammy isn't the only badly behaved member of the family. George is very aggressive with other dogs, especially when he's on the leash. He just, like, spirals out of control. Look at him. I don't like what you're wearing. I don't like that collar. I don't like that leash. Stop. George, stop. stop it. It doesn't matter the size of the dog. He'll just start yipping at them and try to attack them. And I'm worried 
that he's going to be one of those dogs you hear about that went up to the dog that was too big, and he's just going to get ripped to shreds. Come on, get in the brain. In the brain. Be nice. I would love to be able to leave the house and not crate them, that Sammy's not going to open the cupboard and eat all of our food and kill himself. Trust. I'd love to have trust in my dogs. Maybe that's one of the issues. I don't trust my dogs. Caesar was definitely vibing me when we were at the show. You know, he was with his girl you know, in the, in the crowd. But like, I got a couple looks like, I want to help you with your dogs, and I also want to see what that's all about. I want to. Have some pasta with you. No utensils, Lady in the Tramp style. You know what I mean? I felt that for sure. George is a Maltese Chihuahua diva. That's uh, he he's gay. definitely a diva though. He is. I don't gay. know where he gets that from. I don't know who in the house has that sort. That's so strange. There's not anybody that has that vibe. So I don't know where. No, no, no. It's just so strange to and me. And Sammy has no self-control, just like his father. <laughs> I definitely enforced on George more. She coddles George a little bit, and she knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I'll <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What does that mean? He's, Is that true? If you call that coddling, he's uh -huh. like he's a little dog. They're meant to be held and See, you know. You. But the little dogs meant to be disciplined or no? No, they are meant okay, to be. Okay, right, right. I don't feel like we're consistent with anything with them. Yeah. I think we're all like all over the place. You right. Know? right. I hate I hate saying this because I know everyone's busy, but we're pretty busy people, and I don't yeah. feel like we walk them enough. I really don't. Yeah, think yeah. We do. Most of the dogs, when they get in trouble that much, they're bored. They they they're not properly challenged. Uh, the psychological or the mental challenge is, is a must. How can you challenge your dog in what you have? You know what I mean? So you become more like an authority figure. Yeah. And that's what drains the mind. I love my dog, uh, but we have this like excessive relationship, you know? Like when I come home, I get home and he's just going, ar, 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 I'm here, I'm here, ar, I'm here. I'm like, I see you. You know what I mean? George, stop, stop. All right, so ready? Surprise, because they don't know. With Skylar and Nicole waiting outside, Caesar introduces pack member Angel to gauge the dog's level of excitement. This one is the only one. This one is the only one. That was the only one who was actually uh, growling and ready to pounce, this little one. The meatball, or whatever they call him, the most obsessive one, he's actually the most submissive one. All right, so we're gonna do it with the owners. We'll be right back. Nicole, can you come? And you stay right there, Skyler. All right, so I want you to grab. Open the door. First, I wanted Nicole to see it because since she's more passive, they can take advantage of her much easier. That touch, snap out of it, and then the sound uh -huh. is just for him to go into that state. Okay. So this is more normal. This is it's as okay for how they were describing him. He wasn't so bad, you know? So from low, medium, high, George was low. See, the perception of people is not always a reality in dogs. Now let's do a little bit of uh, food. So we're gonna do it here. And we keep doing it in this particular place. This. This is, yeah. This one is the is the obsessive one, but he's already surrendering to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see He knows that? he's not supposed to. Yeah. But he's gonna wait until he gets a chance. Well, well, well. He just can't stop thinking about it. Well, you can also condition the mind that that smell means stay away. So then you say, nah, not even two feet away from the food I want you near. <laughs> That's crazy. You see it? <laughs> yeah. This is the psychological exercise that you can practice. Now, he's not done. He's done when he goes and relaxes and he gives, he gives up. That's why I'm saying that this is psychological because it takes a lot of, okay, so when, 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 when is the human going to show weakness? When is the human gonna show a little bit of a space, you know, so I can just take advantage of the situation? Right. 
But obviously, you have to supervise in the beginning, you know? And you're saying he'll give up? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. No. Everybody has a limit. You have yeah. a limit. Skylar has a limit. Everybody has a limit. So the dog is not touching the food. You can come and sit down. Yeah. Should we stop the exercise right now? No. Why? Because Sammy is pacing. When should we stop the exercise? When Sammy surrenders. I told Sammy, look, I will remove what makes you anxious, but you have to become submissive. See, I don't, I don't see him ever giving up. Like, well, we're gonna show him how that sandwich will go away. At that moment when he lays down, he gives up. we just remove the plate. Then remove it, then he doesn't have to think about it anymore. That's right. That's what I was looking for. Wow. You're telling the dog, you can practice calm oh, submissive right. state. I know you can. And once you do it, I remove it. That's feeding the mind. Yeah, now I gotta clean the kitchen. Oh, okay. So I will utilize the sound. Go. Go. The sound to let them know that that's as far as it can come. Okay. No matter what she's cooking, no matter what she's opening, no matter what she's touching, we can cross that brown line. So that becomes boundaries. What you tell the mind is, stay calm. Yeah. So being calm allows trust. Being assertive allows respect. Calm, assertive. Right. Next, it's Skylar's turn to work with Caesar and the dogs. You know, this is what I'm saying about the psychological, you yeah. know, um, workout that you can do, like sounds that normally triggers excitement. Yeah. You can condition the mind so the mind, instead of being excited, is calm. Okay. Right? Okay, you're a busy people, I understand. But if I can teach you to do something, to challenge a dog, at least at home, with the door, with a dog coming in, bringing food, all of those exercises right there, now we're challenging the dog. Next, it's right. Skylar's turn to work with Caesar and the dogs. This is creating temptation. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just in shock. Yeah. So that requires concentration. This is the second time yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, look at Sammy. See it? <laughs> right, it's, it's, I mean, you saw it. That, the yeah. reason why I brought her first is because she, in the dog world, she's a lot more calmer than you. Mm -hmm. So because what these dogs require more is calmness, yeah. I brought calm energy with me yeah, to support sense. me. Yeah, so now we're evicting me, right? I have to move on. <laughs> Just to, yeah, so Caesar's moving in, honey. Okay, cool. You're out. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, you know, Caesar's pretty powerful. I thought for a second I might lose her. Um, but, you know, I think Caesar respects me, you know, because I'm a comedic genius, so it's amazing. Now, I'd like to see that sandwich in Jaden's hands. <laughs> yeah, they hang around the kids because they see the food in their hands as low-hanging fruit. Sometimes we'll let them eat at their little table, and yeah, they but love to hover around the kids That's right, food. but that, then, then uh, you do it before the kids come in. And, and so that way, you're setting the dogs to have an understanding about, okay, what about if the food is on that? There you go. There we go. Having a tea party. What about... What about if the food is on that on that little chair? What, what do we do? Well, the same thing you were doing when the food was on the ground. Wherever the food is. Wherever the food is. So wait, do you snap before it? It doesn't matter. Okay. You can do your own okay. sound. It really doesn't matter. It's not really my sound. It's the sound that comes natural to you. OK. What's your sound going to be? I don't know. Well, I want to know. <laughs> What's your sound going to be? Sounds going to be <laughs> No. I'm totally gonna do it. Because then I'm gonna have the kids do it. Whisper. And my friends are gonna come over and think that's hilarious. The whole house there was going. Oh, God. <laughs> Caesar taught us that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Next, the group heads outside to test George's aggression towards other dogs. Yeah, George is real aggressive on the walk. Yeah, really excited, not aggressive. Look, yeah. That's sorry. that's Hugo over there. That's see it? Oh, it's a well. Belgian Malinois. Look how, how it's looking this way. See the alertness? Yeah. See what he's saying is, okay, I see excitement coming this way. He's already telling you. So oh. from far away, they start feeling that energy. That's why it's very important, especially for a little dog, not to project that because he becomes a target pow. Yeah. All right, stop right, right there, stop. So, so, so he now 
He's giving avoidance. He's not paying attention to the dog. See, still the mind still, mind still excited. See how it goes, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. It's like a fan turning off, like, it just like slows down. So if you control George, and then Sammy, uh, just reinforce that. There you go, now he comes back. What? You stay right here. Yeah. He doesn't do that when we do that. He becomes very antisocial when he's leading. Okay. So now that he's in a follower position, he can pass calmly and happy. I'm so excited to see that your show doesn't have any special effects and it's real. <laughs> like, I just thought you knew George Lucas or something. You digitized all this. is amazing that it's, like, actually that's, happening. That's my dog. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my dog. I just want you guys to know this is dog. real and it's happening, OK? <laughs> I was like, wow, there's no tricky editing on the show. There's no special effects. Like, like, what you see is what you get. I thought it was very shocking when we were outside and he was able to just walk the dogs right past a big dog. It's never happened. That's an anomaly. I was staring at that going, uh-uh, what? No. And the more you walk, the better it gets. There you go. Everything that he right. suggested doing, we I promise you we were doing the exact opposite in all areas. Yeah, I'm sure, but not this. The fixes that he suggested seem so simple, and they kind of are, and I think that's why they work. We were making the fixes so complicated. There you go, there you go. I'm looking at it differently now. There you, there you, go. you hold on the leash. But it's relaxation time. I've always thought I'm on a walk. I'm on a walk with dog. This is a task. It's a mission. I got to get this done. Blah blah blah. There's an end. There's you know, and even though it's exercise for them, it's time for us to bond and relax. And I never really thought of it that way at all. But now I, I'm gonna like be more present when I'm walking my dog, which is cool. Great for my dog. Great for me. You do see this dog here, right, George? Yeah. But now he's following you and not paying attention to everything else. Yeah. That's the difference between a dog that is following a dog that has been followed. Yeah. What is a leader in the animal world? Somebody who's really there for the pack, somebody who's going to maintain honesty. Honesty, you walk them every day. Integrity, you're very disciplined, you follow through. And the loyalty is created by affection, by the love, you see it? By him waiting again, it slows him down. Having a dog in your life, it really puts you in a position uh, to be a very compassionate leader. Every day put out they a challenge. They say they challenging, like daily challenges. Okay. I'm quitting my job. I'm going to be 24 hours a day challenging. <laughs> Baby, you're on your own as far as rent. When people say, what do you do? I'm going to say, well, Caesar's the dog whisperer. I'm the dog challenger. Challenger. <laughs> 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 <laughs>20-something years, and um, he, Ralphie's allergic to cats. And I was taking, uh, like, four doses of Claritin a day <laughs> to try to deal with it. My cat never liked any one of my boyfriends, but he liked him, and he told me years later that he had bacon in his pocket. So that's a good trick to... I'm in, fat. That's what we do. Endearing. <laughs> you carry bacon. bacon in your pocket. No, no, no. I've got two dogs. I've got a boxer, and his name is Pimp. <laughs> He wears a collar and says, that bitch better have my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Stand-up comedienne Lana Turner married Ralphie in 2005. Raising two children and a pair of dogs provides some uncomfortable moments that make even a comedienne blush. The problem we have between her and, and Pimp, Hoochie has a tendency to, to favor Pimp, give him like indecent cleanings on a regular basis. I had to try and videotape it so that I'd have footage to show you guys. There she goes, dog porn. Oh, so awkward. There's nothing more creepy than following your dog around with your iPhone trying to capture porn. I, <laughs> I just felt so dirty, and, and they honestly didn't like performing for the camera. <laughs> Gucci, you're a dirty bitch. Pimp's the greatest dog of all time. He's a lover, he's sweetheart, um, perfect manners, never snaps, never a rude moment. Great road dog, um, he's been in 42 states. He's um, uh, protective. I used to live uh, at the end of the notorious hooker stroll on the Sunset Boulevard. There's a lot of pimps and hookers. At one time when a pimp actually knocked on our door and was selling his hooker door to door, and Pimp, our dog, was barking and grrr at this guy because he knew he was bad. And I yelled, Pimp, no, Pimp, sit. And the, the actual Pimp looked at me, tilted his head like, you crazy bitch, and walked in and sat down on the couch. I invited a Pimp in inadvertently by telling Pimp to sit. Yeah, was... so there's a lesson learned. <laughs> Hoochie Mama sometimes displays a protective streak. Hoochie, when she's near Pimp, gets really aggressive towards other dogs for no reason. <laughs> She's nearly 60 pounds at three inches off the ground. She's an ottoman moving at you really fast. I mean, she's, <laughs> Hoochie Mama is, is a force. As you can see, this is her neighbor's house. The dog's not even outside, and Hoochie's starting stuff with him. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> she just has an aggressive attitude to her. She kind of bows up like she's tough when she's a lump of lard. She can't do anything but eat and fart most of the time. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I'm afraid she's gonna get hurt, too. You know, she starts to fight, and a bigger dog will finish it. Man, how rude are you? We've really let down our guard with the disciplining. We're that house on the street that has the mean dogs, and we don't want to be, there's too many children on the, on the street, there's too many dogs on the street to be that person, and too many people walking by. And uh, you know, we're just trying not to be, you know, bad dog parents. Don't you think that this is one of um, Pimp's bucket lists? Yeah, this is definitely Caesar. part of Pimp's bucket list is to meet uh, Caesar Milan, all right? And the dog whisperer and get whispered to sweet nothings, you know? All right, I guess uh, this is the girl, right? That does yeah, the, that's the, all right, go that's ahead. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girl, I'm, I'm already taken. Go ahead. There she goes, there she goes. There you go, there you go. I created an excitement. Yeah, right. She likes Mexicans then, that's her. That's really, and then Mexicans and boxers. Who doesn't? Absolutely. That's it. I'm accepted as far as she's concerned. Yeah, right? So, so how bad is she with dogs? She starts fights and then Pimp goes into the fight to stop her. She he was aggressive? Is. He, he used to be. He'd oh, okay. be like, you know, like, when someone would come to the door yeah. or something, he'd go crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, we had him before I had our children. He was our child before yeah. our children. They have no respect for the children. I mean, she'll pull the babies down. If they're holding their leash and another dog comes, they'll pull the babies yeah, down. Yeah, that makes it dangerous. And, and it's, it's dangerous. But and how often do like, you guys work on boundaries? We travel a lot. So, like, we've had them both in some dog obedience. Mm -hmm. We've done some mm -hmm. of the classes yeah. where you learn the... Because they travel so much and work so much and they feel guilty coming back home and, and Pimp is getting older. If you know how to prevent, you don't have to give consequences. Right. But if you miss that second and then the dog is already on somebody else's dog, then you have to, um, you know, do the consequence. Yeah. She's going to lick him. <laughs> available. Place. He made yeah, himself yeah. available. Yeah, right. Never <laughs> return the favor. He's never. <laughs> never. And you know what's really yeah, right? sad about this scenario is that she can't even lick herself. <laughs> so, yeah, no, just, no, no. no action. With yeah, it's no action. <laughs> to accurately gauge the level of Hoochie's dog aggression, Caesar moves Pimp to another room. Then he introduces another male, Junior. 
All right, let me see this baby girl with my boy right here. You stay right there. I want to see that. I wanted to bring Junior in so I can really evaluate how much intensity is Hoochie Mama projecting to the world. What? Really? If I can control your reaction, me bringing a dog into the house, I'm going to win a pack leader position right off the bat. Right? Are you in love, Hoochie? She's like, oh. Yeah, she's have like, you come hey, to you? man, play hard to get. He's the one that doesn't want to come in. Hold on, not yet. So what we're doing here is with this. So you stay right there, Junior. It's a little better. When he was bringing Junior into the house, it was almost a curtain that we couldn't see, but it was the energy that our dog was putting off, right, and starting to amp herself up, okay? And she probably would have amped up faster if she'd been in shape, you know? <laughs> see, and he's avoiding eye contact with her, which is part of the uh, respectful way of being. So now you have a pit bull and a bulldog, you know, two very powerful breeds, interacting with nose instead of the eyes. The anatomy of the bulldog is not really on his benefit physically. They, <clears throat> they spend a lot of time this way, so they use a lot of eyes. So one thing I wanted to help Hoochie is to get connected to the nose. So, so she becomes curious about the dog and not so much sight-oriented, which it triggers the bulldog side, which is fight. There you go. There you go. See, Junior is avoiding because that's what he's been told to do. Watch her, watch her. Yeah, I know, I get it, I get it. Junior, you stay right here, buddy. She was too Junior. Tight, huh? What I did right now is, is control the level of excitement. She's getting excited. That's why Junior is like getting intimidated. Yeah, so <laughs> I also have to protect my boy because she can make him a, a wimp. <laughs> the excitement leads to dominance. Look, look at, at the she's hair. Gonna lick him. She's look at the hair, look at the, look at the ears. Look how he's, he's telling you, look, she's a little bit too much. He's yeah. tense. But she's acting submissively to him, right, by doing yeah, look, that? See how he's going like an accordion? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm watching a slow motion yeah, rape. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I told him I was going to hook you up with a full figure girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's more it. He's just embarrassed. That's that Crenshaw. Side. That's that Crenshaw. Nah, that's better. Oh, look at that. Yeah. See? You're not so tough. Oh, fat baby. Just the correction of her really just changed her whole tone. It's like, oh, this isn't going to be allowed anymore. See, look, now when he's calm submissive, yeah, it's he's, a different... he's elongated. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think the most important thing that we learned today was that we can really correct Hoochie in the moment. Like, we just have to be right on top of her and, and redirect her energy. And it's really easy, like shockingly easy, if you know what you're doing. So here, so here. It's, it's different being in the moment than watching it on television. You know, the camera captures a lot, especially in high def. It makes me look fat. I'm not even really fat. And it's just camera. Um, oh, oh, look at that willpower. The truth is that there's an energy between him and your dogs that convey so much more communication. There's so much more body language. There's so much more, you know, if you put off a positive energy that you'll get positive back. I feel like I haven't done much. I think you have. I think your energy is, is the lesson. Is it okay for Pimp to join? Yeah, I just don't want to put a, a dog that is, you know, I'm has a, stress. yeah, put a stress, yeah, in it. You know, as far as, like, disciplining him. Let's evaluate that at the ranch. It's much easier, you know. Uh, we have more dogs there, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's an open area. So. I want to see the ranch anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Pimp is getting older, and he hasn't gone for a walk in a long time. And if I'm going to evaluate him, I'm going to evaluate him at the closest thing to heaven. And of course, I never had a pimp in my ranch. It's three weeks later, Lana and Pimp arrive at Caesar's Ranch. Ralphie's tour schedule prevents him from joining the group. Pimp has a certain air about him where he, you know, he, he really carries that name very well. He's an older guy, so are we gonna give a little bit more leverage to an older guy? We're we gonna give more respect. And, you know, he's, he's a proud guy. He's, he's a pimp, so he has to keep his head high. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go for a walk. His head was high the whole time. He comes in very cocky. <laughs> when the human overrules instinct, the human can say, you know what, that dog 
Let's just give him space so he can feel good about himself. Let's help him. This is better. So he follows you off leash? Yeah. We are going to use our highest level of calm to miss state. We're going to let Pim just take over our mountain. So right now what I'm doing is allowing Pimp to actually do whatever he wants. This is good for my pack. My pack doesn't uh, spend too much time around older dogs. And so for them giving him space, they practice submission in front of that. So in a way, we're all looking at a senior dog enjoying himself and giving him the space. You know, when you love your dog so much and you get to see them have like special milestone experiences, even at the end here, and you know, we don't know how long we have him, but I could, I mean, it made his day. He's gonna have a big dog smile for a little while, I think. It's pretty cool. He's one of America's most famous Hispanic comedians, star of the original Latin Kings of Comedy, and such TV specials as Paul Rodriguez, Behind Bars. Won't you please welcome Paul Rodriguez! My dog is real friendly. My dog would, he's a chihuahua, I stay within my own kind. But he, <laughs> I, I like everything about a dog. I like uh, the fact that it won't take my house I like the fact that it, it will live with me. A dog will make a man feel in supremo. You know, if you have a, a low self-esteem problems, get a dog. Don't get a cat, you know? They, they don't know you're in the room, you know? They're a leash. They stare. You know, you try to pet them, they give you their butt. You know, they, they're not there with you. A dog is there, man. You get their attention. A dog doesn't judge you by, uh, by how much money you have or what house you live. This is why homeless people have dogs. <laughs> you know, they don't have cats. <laughs> a cat in 30 seconds knows how much money you make where you live. <laughs> Are you divorced? Do you cook? Your whole hygiene, you know? <laughs> what are you doing? Come here. You want some pink outfit? You want the pink tutu? I've always liked dogs. There's something noble about dogs, you know? They're, they totally depend on you, you know? But it's about as close as a man comes to being a mother. They, they ask for nothing, and they, they give you a lot more than, than you give them, you know? The reason I have chihuahuas is because, well, they poop very little, you know? I've been working with Paul for about nine years. Because Paul travels so much, I become the primary caretaker of the dogs here at the house. When Paul got the first dog, it was really great because he was so cute. The second dog, it was a little bit more work. And the third dog, I quit and walked out. Yeah, didn't want to do it, couldn't handle it. Luck has it, I forgot my phone at the house, came back, had two minutes with Luna, and I loved her. That was that. Everyone loves Luna, because she just wants to be loved. The good things come in threes. Even in comedy, all jokes are in threes. It's a holy trinity, you know? This dog right here, for example, it has learned how to tip over uh, beers, you know? And then it'll drink the beer, half a beer, and he's blotto. He's repetitive, barks the same, you know, rah, rah. Tells me I don't listen to him, I don't love him. I'm trying to get him to a doggy uh, six-step program. Ah! I've never seen you like that. What is wrong with you, huh? Are you drinking again? <laughs> and then is Chica my trouble child, you know? Chica, she's just really loud. You know, she barks at everyone, everyone. No one likes her at all. It's been difficult to hold, have a girlfriend because of her. She's very possessive and very jealous, you know? Maybe she's channeling my ex-wife, you know? I have a gardener who's been with me for eight years, and she will bark at him from, from the minute he walks in to the minute he walks out. You know, I got nephews and nieces that come over here, and they doesn't like kids at all. My publicist, or her two daughters, for Christmas, I went to buy them some presents, and when we came back, Chica had, had bitten one, had bitten the little girl. Um, since I'm expecting in a few months, I'm a little worried as to how the dogs will react once a child is around here. It's gonna be kind of scary, because I yeah, can't leave them alone with them. I can't bring the kid over here. That's what I'm afraid of, actually. I think what the dogs really need is someone who knows how they think. I've seen your show about being a pack leader. This thing is just impeccable. You're gonna get it now. 
<laughs> We're gonna fix this the Mexican way. You, you gotta see a real Mexican right here. That's what I'm talking about. All right, go ahead, do some of the garden. Thank then. you. Oh, <laughs> That's the world's most expensive gardener. But this, this one's you actually... got like a pack of chihuahuas here, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know... I... Wow, you really represent. Here's one of the culprits right here. <laughs> no, Look, what, she's, well, she's social. Trying to get the ball, she'll growl at you. That's her, that's her game. So if I go get the ball over there? Yeah, he'll hit he'll... you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll growl. Yeah, growl, but... <laughs> the growl... Well, it's normal to growl, but it's not an aggressive growl. No, it's not an aggressive growl. That's really not the worry. The worry is, it just doesn't like children, I guess. That's what oh. it is. My own granddaughter, I have to, I can't put her and leave her here. I have to put her up in the room because uh, I'm afraid she'll bite her. Oh. She was that ball. Yeah, but she can also wait for it. Would you discipline them? I mean, do you play a role yeah, it's, there? Yeah, it's, you know what? It's hard for me to be disciplined. So my way of dealing with it is always like, you know, I just laugh it off, right, you know. Right. You know. It's funny because this pack of chihuahuas live with a comedian. But even in the house of a comedian, dogs need structure. Without the discipline, Paul can't have his granddaughter with his pack of chihuahuas that he loves so much. I figured if they do the, the duty my floor, they mess up my floor. For me, it's a lot easier to clean it than for me to holler at them. Because mm -hmm. look at this face, look at this yeah, face. Yeah. I feel sorry for them. I go, all right, all right, let's say I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mexican family. Caesar plans to ambush Chica. To deflect her anger, he brings along her favorite squeaky toy. Ah! Welcome. How you doing, man? Ah! So we know that this is what she likes, right? So this is actually what redirects her attention from focusing on the sound of the door or the movement of the people. You see, because this is so powerful to her that she really goes as like, well, I don't really care about people. Where is the frog? <laughs> when I heard her barking, immediately I did the squeaky. Yeah. So she associates us with a toy. With playtime. With playtime. Right. Knock on the door, Swan. <laughs> see it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. So that's prevention. You can bring sounds. Go ahead. You see it here. <laughs> now it just is just visual. So you don't... See, look at that. We're gonna have to get a bunch of frogs for all our friends. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> for all the kids here. <laughs> have a frog. <laughs> but this one right here, he gets into everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at him. He's hung over right now. Look at him. <laughs> He's hung over. Look at him. I took... Waiting for the ball is more important for her yeah. than throwing the ball a hundred times. Yeah. I really appreciate that because it's, it's another yeah, way of, of getting behavior. This is all psychological. Perro que ladra no muerde, compadre. Sí. Perro que ladra no muerde. That's an old Mexican mira, adage. Mira. That's a phrase that we hear from the moment we're born. Perro que ladra no muerde. You know, dog that bark doesn't bite. This one is a bluff. This is a bluff. These dogs are more insecure and excited and tense than aggressive. Do it like, do it like this one. He's totally ignoring. That's him. He he barks himself into a into a coma. <laughs> He sounds like an 80-year-old guy. He corrected himself. <laughs> I'm not angry. Right. You know, to me, discipline or authority figure has nothing to do with our parents. Right. I have to remind Paul that discipline is love. I hope everybody understands that discipline plays uh, a role in peace, plays a role in harmony. Stop it. Stop it. There you go. You have it. Because, you know, the next step was going to be to, to get them some Valium. That was the next step, you know? Oh, yeah, that's the American way. Yes, yeah, the American way. <laughs> i hold this for you. Next, Caesar turns his attention to Morgan, who is three months pregnant and the primary dog walker in the household. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And she won't move now. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. This is very good. That's all right. Don't worry, don't worry. This is all normal. 
Why? <laughs> She's freaking out on her own. Know, she, always, she always yelps for no reason. Yeah, but... nobody's pulling her. That's just no? okay. her freaking out. There, there, Mom. I know. Come on. You gotta, you gotta come with me. Okay. Dogs will throw themselves in the ground. Dogs will shut down just to control the walk. And it sounds like you're killing the dog. But if you don't lead, they will lead their own way. She's a good actress, right? She's a good telenovela girl. Just like what she did on the stairs, you, you gotta let them throw that out. Like you know a tantrum, I, mean? I guess. It's, it's the tantrum and they learn to control people that way. So, you know, but if you learned, there you go. See it? Oh. In reality, you didn't do nothing wrong. She's the one who's pulling back. But if you start getting nervous and upset, and, and they say, ah. They got me. This is how I control <laughs> her. I just have to make this sound. It makes us believe that, that we're hurting her. Yeah, though. exactly. Right. You know, we say, well, we're choking her, but in reality, she was doing it herself, yeah. It's the best I've ever seen him walk. <laughs> well, I haven't seen him walk at all. I know you haven't. I know you haven't. <laughs> just staying calm, that's better than having a reaction. And that does more for the dog than to react to it and freak out, because then it'll freak out, and then it's a chain reaction. So what do you think, Paul? What do you think? I think I want to walk him. Oh, wow. OK, go ahead. Wow. All right, you dogs. Wow. I'm the big chihuahua here. That's Let's right. <laughs> Chica, don't make me look bad. Don't make me look bad at national TV. Turn the camera off. I'm on a kickball. I'm using him as a football. Come on. There you go. There you go. You're right there. You're right there. Let's go. Yeah, hey, beautiful. You. You got it, Paul. Oh. That's right. Come on. Come on. Paul, here we go. chihuahua whisper. I'm the Chihuahua Holler. Holler, that's right, look at that, woo! We're gonna go around, boys? Come on, let's go to this Korean restaurant I know. Let's go, <laughs> let's go, there you go. Right, come on, we're not at the races in Santa Anita here. <laughs> now this right hand, yeah, like, first see, time see, see. walked him ever, right there, look at that. I'm crying, it's a good moment. Very relaxed. Moment. Today I think I was more emotional about Paul walking the dogs for the first time. Good girl! I'm pretty shocked of what happened today, it was amazing. I knew he could do it, though. <laughs> you know, these chihuahuas are in the palm of my hand. <laughs> you know, I've seen uh, the show on television, obviously, and I've seen miraculous uh, changes. But uh, being in television myself, I said, well, you know, uh, probably they did something. It, it couldn't be this, this black and white. Well, it is this black and white. I mean, it's like I have new dogs now, you know? One day with Caesar, and they're like beyond respectful with him now, and I kind of want that, so I'm a little jealous. <laughs> so I'm gonna work hard for it. You know, these chihuahuas have never been this behaved. Yeah. It's kind of like a, riding a bike looks easy, you know, when you're a kid, but you really don't know what it's like until you ride a bike. And, and I'm gonna ride these dogs, I'm gonna ride them hard. I'm gonna be tough, but I'm gonna be fair. Sorry, and the main thing is never tie them to the fender of the car. <laughs> my neighbors are gonna hear a lot of noises, a lot of screams, it's gonna look like I'm abusing my dog, <laughs> but I'll do what I have to do. An out of control dog is no laughing matter. Fortunately, the canines and comedians I work with are now well on their way to enjoying a more fulfilling life with their pack. I am the dog whisperer.